Hi, and welcome back. I'll now be talking about how to write up the results section of your thesis. Well, that's quite easy since you already have assembled the figures, so you know the order in that you would like to argue. And now all you need to do is to write a chapter in the result section for each figure. So you take one figure and you describe what you observed in this figure in one chapter of the results section. So that's easy enough. And the only point is how to set up such a chapter. So what you normally do is to first write down a question that you have been addressing in that particular chapter and in that particular figure. So it's a question. And sometimes that question would then translate into a working hypothesis. Working hypothesis. So basically you tell the reader what you have been trying to learn in that chapter. So the next point is to translate that question into an experiment. So you describe what you have been doing. You describe the experiment. Experiment. And that experiment is derived from the question. Now once you have described what kind of experiments you have been performing to address that question, you now come up with the result. And that result is shown in the figure that you are presenting in that chapter. So the experiment would then lead to a result. However, it's not enough to communicate to the reader that the result is shown in figure number so and so. Instead, the results should be described in a way that you can appreciate them even without looking at the figures. So you must tell the reader what you have observed. You don't write the result is shown in figure number so and so. Instead you write as shown in figure number so and so the result was the following and then you describe the result in detail. So you can understand the results without looking at the figure. So once you have described the results, you aren't quite done yet. Instead, what you need to do next is to write down what you conclude from these results. And that's not the extensive kind of conclusions that you will write down in the discussion section. Instead, you just write down the immediate conclusion from that particular result. Conclusion. So, in a way, writing down the result is a bit like in those mathematical problems that you have been addressing in elementary school. Remember, your teacher gave you a problem like, Peter goes to the shop, he's buying three oranges and one orange is five cents. Remember what you need to do then? Well, first you need to write down the question. That's precisely the question that you need to write down for your result as well. So the question in this case would be, how much does Peter have to pay altogether? Then again, you write down how you were translating this question into an experiment, or back then at school it was how you were translating that question into a mathematical equation. In this case, the mathematical e equation would be 3 times 5. Then you write down the result, what you have observed, or what the result of that calculation was. In this case, the result would be 15. And in the end, you were not quite done with that, right? If you stopped here, your teacher wasn't happy yet. Your teacher wanted you to phrase the answer to the question, which in this case was, Peter has to pay 15 cents. And that corresponds to the conclusion. So you do that. And then you start the next chapter. 
each chapter in your research section should have a heading and that heading is in one sentence the main observation in that chapter of your results. And then you just go through it one by one, through each figure and for each figure you write one such chapter of your results section until you're done with all of your results. And that's pretty much it. Once you're done with that, you're ready to keep going and I suggest that you now start writing up the introduction to your thesis. I'll cover that in the next video. See you then.